Hello and welcome back. I've been wanting to do a video on dino flagellates, aka dinos for a while now. A reefer's description of what they are is something like this. Dinos are fast reproducing photosynthetic microorganisms that form stringy or snot-like substances that are not only an eyesore but can also choke out and kill your corals. They are difficult to get rid of and you can find thousands upon thousands of pages on reefing forums on how to deal with them. I've been battling dinos in my quarantine tank for over three months. I've had dinos in several previous tanks and the main way I dealt with it was to restart the tank. In fact, my current 120 had a dino problem in the beginning. I actually restarted the tank a couple of months into it because of the dinos and also because I had to replace the center brace which broke after I dropped the light on it. But back to my quarantine tank. There are so many anecdotal and so-called easy fixes for dinoflagellates and it would be a waste of my time for me to list them here. But the consensus is that things like hydrogen peroxide, bleach, keeping up the pH, or blacking out the tank for several days is ineffective for most people. But there's a great thread on Reef to Reef about using natural methods to conquer dinoflagellate outbreaks which are a very common problem in this hobby. I'll put a link in the description for that thread. Dinoflagellates, to put it simply, seem to develop in immature or significantly disturbed tanks that are running aggressive nutrient export methods. This particular tank has been running for over a year now and its main biological filtration was some rock rubble that came from my display tank. What happened was that after a while the rock rubble became infested with bryopsis and since it was an eyesore I took it out. Soon after I took out that mature rock rubble my dino outbreak started. At the time I was also running Roafos which is a type of GFO for phosphate removal. So this is a textbook example of the perfect conditions for dinos to take over. That is, a significantly disturbed system by taking out the mature rock rubble coupled with aggressive phosphate removal. Now how to deal with dinoflagellates. To summarize, if you read that thread on Reef to Reef, the natural way of killing dinos uses three main components. Number one, keep nitrate and phosphate elevated. The reason for this is because dinos seem to thrive in zero nitrate and zero phosphate environments. And you cannot just feed a bunch of fish food to get those parameters up. You should actually dose nitrate and phosphate, which I did. Number two, allow other photosynthetic organisms, mainly algae, the chance to thrive. This means removing your cleanup crew, such as snails and crabs, and algae grazing fish if you have them. Also, they recommend removing all macroalgae like Kato that can aggressively lower nutrients. In my case, I decided to keep a small ball of Kato in because I'm no longer running a skimmer in my quarantine tank and the tank was getting quite stinky. But I did remove all the snails and all but one hermit crab. Number three employ a UV sterilizer. The theory here is that simply when the dinos are in the water column the UV sterilizer will kill them. So your job is to mobilize the dinos by blowing them off the rocks and glass. For one week I tried number one and number two alone but was unsuccessful. The dinos were still all over the place but the good thing was that there was a bunch of other algae starting to appear on the glass and rocks. So eventually I did buy a UV sterilizer. The one I got is a 40 watt made by Pentair. It's an expensive and massive UV sterilizer for this 30 gallon system. But I got it because I wanted something that I could throw on a bigger tank later. And also I've been in this hobby long enough to know that going cheap often ends up costing you more in the long run. There were just too many complaints about other less expensive brands. 
So I installed this thing and took a power head and blew away all the dinoflagellates. The next day there was a considerable difference. In the past, if I blew away the dinos without the UV sterilizer, I would see the same amount of dinos throughout the tank within a couple of hours. But now, 24 hours into installing it, I noticed a pretty big difference. Don't get me wrong, there were still dinos everywhere, but it was noticeably better. So once again, I took a power head to the dinos and the next day after that, there was even more improvement. I would blow away the dinos probably about two times a day, once midday and once again before I went to bed. I've been running the UV sterilizer 24-7. Day 4 was another milestone. This time midday, I did not feel the need to power head away the dino flagellates. There were still a couple of stray dino strings, but for the most part they were gone. I checked the nitrate and phosphate. Phosphates were 0.83 and the nitrates, oddly enough, were below 5 despite my dosing. It may be a bit early to say, but I'm 95% sure that this technique is working. So my plan from here is to run the UV sterilizer 24-7, at least for a couple of months, until I'm sure that my tank is biologically mature enough to where a dinoflagellate outbreak won't recur. Then I'll taper down the UV usage. In a week, I'm going to slowly introduce one snail at a time to get this algae cut down in hopes that my Kato becomes the primary source of nutrient export. This time, I will keep a close eye on my nitrates and phosphates to make sure they don't go to zero. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I just wanted to tell you my personal experience with dinoflagellates and how I conquered them. Dinos, if you ever deal with them, are such a pain in the ass and they even cause people to leave the hobby altogether. Hopefully the reef to reef thread and this video will help you get over this awful problem. If you're new to the hobby or starting a new tank, definitely go slow. You don't want to start with a bunch of dried rock and blast it with light right away. You don't want to aggressively get your nitrates and phosphates to zero. You need time for your rock and biological filtration to mature. Bring the photo period and light intensity up slowly. You need your rock to develop a healthy amount of beneficial algae. You hear it all the time, nothing good in this hobby happens quick. And when talking about dinoflagellates, an ounce of prevention is worth tons of cure. Thanks for watching.